Smack water. Cake ass nigga in the green room, man. Man, what's up, Smackwater? How you feeling tonight, man? Shit, I'm foul for a square with no hat, nigga. You know how that shit go. Nah, I feel that. I feel that, yeah. man. Smackwater is like, man, one of my favorite green room guests. He's one of my favorite people to, to work with. Every time on in the privilege, man. No Diddy, though. No Diddy, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no Diddy. No doubt. Uh, nigga, start, I just go die right <laughs> in, nigga. No Diddy. Don't die right in. No Diddy. Uh, damn, I don't even play the No Diddy game. It's so motherfucking tough right now. You got to say No Diddy, nigga, because a nigga don't know where you coming from. Hey, it's crazy out here. Diddy out here putting dick on niggas, nigga. Crazy. Hold to it. I don't know. Who said? I say hoes too, I guess. Okay, I don't right. know what that nigga Diddy got going on, man. Yeah, man. It's a wild dude, man. Yeah, my nigga. All that shit coming back on that nigga, man, you know, a lot of niggas out here screaming at old, wanna fly that pro-black flag for that nigga now, but shit, motherfuckers wanna just conveniently overlook the fact that, you know, that nigga Diddy is is a monkey nigga, man. Diddy done done a lot of shit, man. So you can't really be mad when a nigga get what he got coming, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't the one to say what the nigga got coming, but shit, all this shit happening for a reason, and, you know, he gave motherfuckers the ammunition and the bullets to shoot the shit out of him with. You know what I'm saying? He been up there. Man, motherfuckers don't say the same shit over and over about you, my nigga. If a nigga keep saying you a hoe-ass nigga, man, you got to be a hoe. Everybody ain't just going to say you a hoe-ass nigga, my yeah. nigga. You know what I'm saying? You got to come from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you giving motherfuckers the ammunition, what they need to, you know, crucify you, my nigga. And... That's just what it is, man. And, you know, the nigga done done some dirty shit. He ain't, man, you don't accumulate that kind of money and that kind of wealth without fucking over people, man. You ain't never heard the goddamn saying, if with, for every great fortune as a great crime. And that nigga been fucking over artists and shit since he came in the game. And niggas just want to be like, well, that's how business is done. Nah, that's how fucked up business is done. You know. Not for sure. To each his own. Man, the writing has been on the wall for a long time, man. Fuck yeah, yeah man. The writing's been on the wall. Yeah. It's something that we kind of always knew, but. Niggas overlook. Overlook. Yeah, overlook. niggas overlook. It's like. Been getting money. It's like a bully in the hood. Like a motherfucker. Niggas, you know, this bully ass nigga bullying everybody, but won't nobody say nothing to check this nigga. But when something happened to that nigga, you know, it ain't like niggas fucked up about it that it happened. You know, nigga been out here doing, nigga, free my homeboy. Nigga, your homeboy shot two innocent motherfuckers, a baby, a raped an old lady. Nigga, fuck your homeboy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Niggas always want to talk about come to a bitch-ass nigga rescue that really deserve what the fuck he, he getting. All right, that's why I say, nigga, I ain't, when I went to the penitentiary, I was out there in them streets. Nigga, I didn't cry. Nigga, I was out there in the streets. I so anything that come when, whenever, whatever game you playing, if you robbing banks and them laws jam you up and, and send you to jail for robbing banks, nigga, that's what the fuck you get. Nigga, if you out there hustling, you get jammed up. That's what you get. Nigga, if you, you know, putting dick on, on niggas and, you know, fucking niggas out their money and, and contracts and, you know, playing with them white folks and sucking on them white folks dick, nigga, that's what the fuck you get when all that shit fall down, man. No, I feel you. Do you ever do you ever subscribe to the idea where they talk about okay, a black man gets really wealthy in the entertainment in America, and they always gonna come for him with a case or something, especially sexually? Well, that, that, I've been said it that the the easiest way to discredit any black man is to make him out to be a sexual deviant, a sexual pervert, or or, or some kind of miscreant of some kind of sexual nature because the black man puts so much emphasis on our sexuality. That's why the niggas grab their dick all the time because that's the only thing a nigga got left. White man and took everything else that a nigga got. This old Korean nigga, uh, Asian nigga, he just took a nigga dick. You seen that shit? The nigga who no. uh, got a, a nigga dick transplanted on him like wow. a 12-inch dick? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it, you know, that's how they don't even want a nigga to have a dick no more. I hear white folks uh, been eating niggas, like cannibalizing niggas' dicks since the 14, 15. <laughs> hey hoping, it, hoping it gives them the sexual prowess of a black man. I don't put nothing past it. But yeah, man, that's 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 the play that they run, my nigga, because they, they is, one, is good theater. 
Two, it continues the narrative that niggas ain't shit or niggas can't be trusted or niggas is to blame for crime or niggas is to blame, period. And it keeps the eyes off of the true criminals and the true motherfuckers that's pulling the strings and the motherfuckers that's really got everything in this world fucked up. You know, they, they just use niggas as scape. Niggas been the scapegoats, the victims, all that shit, you know. And then you got motherfuckers out here who get mad because, you know, niggas, niggas really calling this shit out. But you got motherfuckers who want to place the blame squarely on niggas. Niggas is to blame somewhat. You know what I'm saying? We, because we, we. We didn't create the situation, but we helped perpetuate the situation, if that makes any sense to you. We, we didn't make it like this, but now that it's rolling, we help to keep the shit going. And then whenever we do pivot and shift to try to change or, or do something to better ourselves, the system corrects itself and puts another obstacle in our path to put us right back on that road to destruction. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? They they are never going to allow niggas to, to liberate themselves, to really think for themselves, to be free of this system and of the white man and of the white man mentality because they need, niggas and, and crackers need each other equally. <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, yeah, we symbiotes, my nigga. <laughs> we need each other. With You couldn't, when they freed niggas from slavery, the master had to chase a lot of them bitch ass niggas off the plantation. Get on, you, you, get away from here. Cause they was mad that they lost their status as slave master. So fuck all you niggas. I kill you niggas if you're going on. Get your bitch. And the master, where I'ma go, master? I don't, I don't know nothing. My nigga didn't want to go nowhere. And you couldn't, nigga. If they told niggas go right now, niggas. Go wild, bitch. <laughs> what you want me to do? I got work in the morning. What you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nigga, you don't got no job here no more. Go, nigga. Where you want us to go? Where is it that a nigga gonna go? Tell me if a nigga wants to lead us. Where is a nigga gonna go? Because anywhere a nigga go, he's gonna be an outcast. He's not, if you go to Africa, you know, they old oh, brother, no, it's gonna be Africans that like, uh, here come these bitch ass niggas. <laughs> It's crazy, man. It's 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 wild, man, for the black man. Yeah, man. We ain't nobody on this earth in a situation that a nigga is in. Facts. Every other motherfucking race of people has a place to call home, except for us. And the place that we do call home, this motherfucker really don't want us. They need us, though, because niggas help keep this system afloat. Of capitalism. Yeah, man. They can't get away. They, they, nigga, go back to Africa. That's a stupid, dumb, bitch-ass cracker that say shit like that. Because if you ask the motherfucking crackers in position, we don't want them niggas to go nowhere. We need them niggas. We need them niggas to sell our dope. We need them niggas to fill up our motherfucking jails. We need these niggas to oppress. We need these niggas to be stupid, dumb, monkey motherfuckers so we could continue to place blame on them and make them the fall guy of everything that happens in this society. We need these stupid ass niggas culture because our culture is the biggest thing that we got. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> with the Diddy thing, with knowing the play that they running on Diddy, attacking a black man for his sexuality, knowing that's the play, how much of the allegations from your perception, like your perception do you believe are like true? I believe, I actually believe that most, most of it has. I, I believe that we don't even know a third or a quarter of the shit. I, I believe it's way more because <clears throat> what niggas got to realize is, as a society, we're not privy of the shit that go on behind them. I doors. believe that we don't even know a third or a quarter of the shit, my nigga. That's just the shit. So it's possibly more shit. I, I ain't no possibly, my nigga. The man, this man live his life every day. These is not isolated incidents. It's like when they kill a nigga and they want to say, oh, it's isolated. It's not isolated. This is this nigga's lifestyle. So it's a lot. This is how he live every day like this, my nigga. This is just the moments that they that they uh, bookmark. Right, for sure. There's, you know? been, there's been patterns, though. Yeah, man, a man came in the game. That's probably, that was his way in the dough, man. He came up under Andre Herrera. Andre Herrera introduced him to that dick. 
You think so? Andre Harrell was kind of man. Andre Harrell was a man. Andre Harrell was with the <laughs> business. Man was with the shits, nigga. The man, shits, I, literally. Yeah, man. Andre Harrell <laughs> introduced that nigga to that dick, man. He, That's crazy. That nigga started off an intern, but he was a hustling nigga. He kept his ear to the street. That nigga knew what was hot. He, he, you can't take it away from him. the nigga. Know uh, a hot ass song or a dope ass int- idea when it comes to music, and he's a marketing fucking genius. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, yeah, you can't take that away from him. But the nigga is, and I don't believe that he started out a pervert or or a freak like that. But I I think that being in that industry, and it's like being in a fraternity. And you know, nigga, I suck dick to get where I'm at. Nigga, you gonna suck dick to get, you know, nigga, you won't. I could I could hook you up with this, or or I could make sure that your song hit the charts. Cause he he was a gatekeeper. You gotta come through me. Yeah. And he that's how he treated niggas. He felt like them white folks, you our nigga. You the number one nigga. So he treated niggas like that. He handled motherfuckers like that. Remember he hit that coach at USC in the head with a dumbbell? White folks swept it under the carpet. If that would have been a regular nigga, he would have been locked the fuck up. It's been patterns, man. It's been patterns for real. So we had the Shine Club shooting. That bitch say he the one who shot her in the face. Yeah, I seen that. Seen yeah. that. We had uh, swept it under the carpet. Mace ran away, became a pastor. Yeah, Biggie you died. tried to put dick on Mace. Mace. <laughs> <laughs> you made a nigga turn to Jesus, nigga. Jesus, I gotta get some Jesus for this. Nah, <laughs> that nigga, Jesus saved that nigga for that dick. <laughs> <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> no Diddy. No Diddy. No Diddy. No Diddy. <laughs> nah, but I fucks with Mace. I like yeah. shout out to Mace and Cameron. I fucks with them niggas and they podcast with some funny niggas together. Facts, facts. Yeah. It's a pattern though. Everybody who left Bad Boy from Black Rob turned into a crackhead. Well, he was G-Dep. a crackhead in the mix. Facts, facts. But G Depp he went was to full prison. of that dump. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's there's no it's no good stories of leaving yeah. Bad Boy. Let me tell you something, man. Uh I always, I wasn't blessed to become the the uh, mogul that I aspired to be. But I always, in my mind, I could never see why these record exec, record label owner, CEOs of these black labels would want to see their artists destitute or broke. I, but I understand it's the pimp and hoe system. You want to keep the hoe relying on you. Yeah. You don't want the whole to not need you. You need the whole to need so you keep the whole starving and keep the whole hungry. But this is the music business. This your artist reflects on you. So if your artist is broke, you pulling up in a motherfucking Bentley and your artist pulling up in a goddamn Toyota Camry, but talk about I'm flossing, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But that don't reflect good on your business, Savvy, because now here come another little hot artist you see and you like, damn, I want to sign that nigga. But I'm looking at this nigga, nigga, this nigga, this nigga got a Camry, nigga. He got a dummy tie on this shit. Nigga, I ain't signing to you, nigga. I seen this nigga video. He had all his jewelry on and was driving a Ferrari, nigga. Where that shit at? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That you, And that's what P... He did do it with his order. He made sure all his artists outside from video, but they could actually look good when you seen them aside from him. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Diddy. Nah, fuck no. Nah. Diddy, Diddy is, was selfish when it came to that part of the game, my nigga. And, you know, you, he'll starve a nigga, man. Did you see when he gave a lot of his artists their publishing back? A couple I, years ago, yeah, but but it was everybody said it was too late. Yeah, but the, yeah, it's too late. The when music wasn't hot anymore. Yeah, they, they publishing ain't the only publishing not a bad boy worth some is Biggie shit. Yeah. And I don't know if he gave Biggie shit back to his family and his mama and daughter them to the Biggie estate. I don't know. I didn't do the research, but that's the only music that's worth some shit. Puffy shit really ain't ain't worth nothing. A lot of people say that was the first sign. That stuff, something he, they say Diddy knew something was coming when he, when yeah, he, trying like, to do damage control. Yeah, okay. Yeah, niggas try to do damage control. That was about two control. years ago, two or three years ago. Nah, it ain't been no two, three years, man. That shit was just last year. That, that was like, last year? Like around okay. the end of last year, like October, November. That okay. shit ain't been long at all, man. For sure. That's damage control, man. But, the, you know, trying to win some brownie points and shit. But that shit backfired. Niggas was still going in on them, you know. Man, niggas, everybody ain't dumb, man. 
That's see, that's what they that's what they count on in society. They count on the ignorance, the naivete, the stupidity, the dumbness of niggas. That you know, niggas just just cause you got money. Niggas give bitch ass niggas a pass cause niggas got money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't any nigga. They feel like you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Hey, you don't know. And they'll flaunt, no, we flaunt, see that shit. We flaunt see that a shit. nigga around you that got money and you think just because this nigga got money, this nigga is, is moral and this nigga is, is upstanding and this is a righteous nigga. And this nigga's a motherfucking vagabond, man. He just 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 look good. Niggas, but that I nigga's soul nigga, is a fucked lot of, up. A lot of niggas be seeing that, but it's just like they don't promote that. You feel me? No, because niggas is afraid to say what's real, especially if it's going to fuck with my money. Mm -hmm. If it's going to fuck with my money, nigga, fuck that. Niggas put money, and that's the society. That, that's how they have structured this society. It's a capitalist society. Nigga, if I could capitalize, that's all the fuck that matters with the average motherfucker, man. You ain't, motherfuckers will sell out, man. Motherfuckers ain't got no integrity, ain't got no principles, ain't got no standards, no morals, what they going to stand on. Man, these niggas, you get yourself a check in these niggas' face, man. These niggas will suck that dick, nigga. It's crazy. These niggas will suck a white boy dick. These niggas will, will, will bend over and let a nigga put dick on them. And just perpetuate that shit. Niggas just take that shit and just niggas just put dick on each other, man. <laughs> these a, niggas is crazy horrible. man these niggas is deplorable my nigga these Not niggas man I was raised around some real stiff ass niggas my nigga you couldn't even come around with that punk shit man right. get your bitch ass on you couldn't even come around the women with punk shit when I was growing up man man women the women I grew up around they didn't embrace that homosexual shit they didn't they didn't just try to hurt them or, or, but they Punks knew to stay in their place, man. You stay your bitch ass over there, what you doing? And don't even, when it came to family, nigga, we, we, I had a motherfucking punk in my family. And when he came around, he knew, my nigga, you, you amongst family, but nigga, don't get out of pocket, nigga, around here, nigga, because you the only one in this motherfucking yard about the nigga, the rest of us don't condone that bullshit. We don't co-sign it and we don't rock with it, but we love you. But you stay in your motherfucking place in this yard, family reunion, nigga. Cause you know, wow, my family will shoot shoot each other, fight each other, nigga. <laughs> nah, for real. I yeah. feel you though. I feel you for real. Man, when you heard the allegations about Meek Mill with P. Diddy, what did you first think? Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought he was finished when he put that dick on me and the dick in it. <laughs> I think I think nobody is taking more consecutive L's than Meek Mill on the internet, man. Yeah, Meek, I just showed you the the, the homosexual nigga, you know, coming at the nigga and just, just tell him, nigga, I'm here for you. Morally, physically, I, man, you know, a lot of niggas want to say that this AI, that audio leak, some motherfuckers say, I heard some people say Nicki Minaj leaked it, I heard some other motherfuckers leaked it. Uh, my partner Gooch, shout out to Gooch, he said that AI ain't that motherfucking all uh, good where it could uh, emulate niggas in duress and in stressful situations. <laughs> that shit wild. Yeah, that Get this ass, nigga. God damn, my nigga. What is we doing, my nigga? That Meek Mill shit, that shit was tough because I think it messed up his album sales. Man. And I'm talking about, that, nigga, that was clapping cheeks, nigga. That, that was, you know what I'm talking about, my nigga? <laughs> I don't know, my nigga. That's... And I don't even know if that video uh, where they ask Puffy, do he like men and women? I don't, you know, niggas sent me that shit. And I was like, man, this AI shit is getting out of control because they didn't create it to where a nigga don't even really know what to believe. Like, at this point, I don't know what to believe, my nigga. And I'm just being honest. When you got to second guess damn near everything now because computers and technology is so goddamn advanced and what people are able to do, my nigga. That shit that is borderline. It's really scary, my nigga. I don't understand. Do you know the Jetsons came out in 1966, my nigga? Yeah, okay. I didn't know that, but... 1966, they had FaceTime, flying cars, all this, this futuristic shit. Touchscreen, all that shit. Yeah, and we got that shit today. 
a lot of it. We they fucking with flying cars. It ain't to the to the point that it was on Justin's, but they do have flying vehicles now. But what I'm I'm saying that to say this. This shit that y'all predicted on the Jetsons is coming true. Coming true. 50, uh, 66, uh, damn near 60 years. So what's to stop the shit from Terminator coming true, my nigga? Damn, that's, that's, that's a crazy way to look at it. I'll be back. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like y'all predicted that shit. What's to stop this shit, dude? You know... This might sound crazy to everybody, my nigga. I do believe in, in uh, parallel universes and time travel. Deja vu is a form of time travel. When you sleep and you see, go and do something, and then you two months, three months later, you be like, damn, I dreamed this. That's a form of time travel, my nigga. Or it's a parallel universe. They always say the universe expands and contracts and, and folds in on each other and that you know, that the past, present, and future all happens at the same time. So, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if a motherfucker seen this shit or has a motherfucker traveled. And I don't know, man. It, I don't know, man. It's it's weird. It's so much manipulation when it comes to images nowadays. Oh, fuck yeah, my nigga. The shit where they talking about AI writing the raps and AI. Yeah. Do, you could uh, use AI to make a beat now and... I seen Simba on the Joe Budden podcast say he used it, and I really like Simba. I felt conflicted when I heard him say what he say that he used AI to write his raps. Fuck, damn, that's crazy. I was like, damn, man, I you dope, but I don't know if you dope or the AI program is dope. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? That fucked me up. I was kind of conflicted about. It. I ain't know how to feel about that because I really think that that nigga is dope, and I, I don't know, man. It's we just had a crazy point in time. You know, and niggas got to be careful. Niggas, you know, a lot of niggas is 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 saying it. You know, Jay Z up up next. That nigga on deck. Yeah, that's crazy. I hope not, man. I you know, not. but you up there playing with the, playing with them, man. You ain't in them social circles, my nigga. And you, that's why that would never be true change within the government because Congress has become so corrupt that. A first-time senator or first-time representative, they might come in with good intentions. But when you get in now with motherfuckers who've been lifetime politicians doing all this bullshit and that's getting to the money, they not going to allow you to come in there and upset that system. They going to indoctrinate you, too. Yeah. yeah. Or if you ain't going to get down with the program, they're going to make sure that you're not reelected, my nigga, because they're going to paint you every initiative that you try to present. They're going to make that shit fail. They're going to get you up out of there, my nigga. Them polit man, the politicians, they vote no against universal health care, free health care. But guess who got free health care? All the politicians. It's crazy. But That's you crazy. can't have free health care. Crazy. Politicians, man, I do not know why we care so motherfucking much. I don't give a fuck, but you bitch ass niggas for some reason give a fuck about these people that really don't give a fuck about us at all. My nigga told me a story. Oh, the last hurricane. Uh, was it the hurricane? It was something. But uh, some or was it the flood? Some hit the city. And so my nigga, he went and bought a whole bunch of water and shit to give out because niggas needed water and shit. This nigga said Sylvester Turner and Sheila Jackson Lee pulled up and hijacked his water drop. <laughs> That's crazy. Pulled up with motherfucking cameras and camera crews, jumped out, started giving speeches like they provided this water to the people, handed out a couple cases of water, got the shit on camera, hopped back in a suburban and burnt the fuck out. I believe it. I believe it. This is the motherfucker. Do you know Sheila Jackson Lee? What the fuck? Her only thing that she's done since she's been in Congress? I can't think of one thing. She made sure the only bill or law that her name is attached to is she made sure that hurricanes get named after niggas. Damn, that's crazy. This is her fucking legacy. We gonna have some hurricanes named after niggas. I want a hurricane Lakeisha. Jamal coming. <laughs> Hurricane Jamal on the way. A uh, Hurricane DeAndre. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Crazy. That's just another thing they could attach to a nigga. Uh, 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 uh. Hurricane Smackwater came through and just wiped out every motherfucking thing. I told that bitch ass nigga. Hey, that, hey, that would be cold, though. 
<laughs> that would be cold in the motherfucker. If it is a hurricane, they name I'd be I want to tear this bitch up. <laughs> hurricane, category five. I'm talking about lay some shit to the ground, nigga. Y'all hear that? If y'all hear that, y'all know to, to hunker down for real. Yeah, yeah, my nigga. When, when it's out there in the water, it got to be a bad motherfucker if you name it after me. Don't give me no one or two bitch ass nigga when it hit land. That shit feels a lot like a cake ass nigga. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Yeah, uh, give a nigga a homosexual hurricane. <laughs> that bitch gonna be pink on, pink on the damn chart and shit. Pink on the, the damn Doppler meter and shit. That bitch gonna have a bunch of colors. <laughs> Different colors. Red. You know that motherfucker ain't nobody shit. <laughs> that motherfucker's this bitch a- confused. It don't know what it wanna do. It got <laughs> Oh, shit. Man, look, before I get off this Diddy shit, last question I got to ask on that shit. Do you think he going to do some time? I don't know. I hope he get off, my nigga. Well, he on the run right Hold now. up. Let me say this. If he ain't done, well, he done the shit. But if he ain't, if the shit just ain't that fucked up, like if it's just him being a freaky nigga, he don't deserve to go to jail behind what, just what, being a freaky nigga. I think his charges are heavy because they're charging him with they're trying to, drug trafficking Yeah, now, drug trafficking, sex trafficking. Sex trafficking. And then, uh, you know, they raided his home. Yeah. And uh, you seen where they hit Young Miami with some drug trafficking as well. Uh, nah, I ain't know that. I know uh, my nigga Cornell, shout out to Music Monopoly, he hit me today and said that uh, they supposedly found hidden cameras in all the rooms. I believe it. Yeah, and you know, the first nigga that ran that play well, to my knowledge, it's Hugh Hefner. The Playboy Mansion had cameras all over. If you ain't seen Secrets of Playboy on A and E, eleven yeah, parts, that that bad was motherfucker. She was dope. Yeah, shout out to Hugh. Hugh was that nigga. Yeah, he was. That nigga had footage on every import because you know everybody came through the Playboy Mansion. Fact. You wasn't shit if you didn't come to the Playboy Man. Don't say you that nigga, and I ain't never seen you at the Playboy Man. Get the fuck out my face, nigga. You a nobody. Max. You know what I'm saying? But and Hugh, they say the only place wasn't no camera was in the grotto. But everywhere else it was cameras. Hugh had cameras on every little freaky thing that every motherfucker was doing. And so did Diddy, nigga. They say Diddy had cameras all over that motherfucker. Diddy took a page out of Yeah, I definitely seen that. Yeah. Diddy had cameras everywhere. So I really believe that uh Diddy holding his nuts on him because he party with some high power motherfuckers. He like, nigga, I burn this bitch to the ground, nigga. You got me fucked up, nigga. I got this nigga on camera eating dick. I got this nigga on camera that uh voted no against drugs, snowing cocaine. I got this nigga over here claiming to be a family man having a having sex with a motherfucking sixteen year old boy. I got this motherfucker. That nigga got some footage, my nigga. That's why they went in that house going and vote. They trying to find or he got some some something. On one of them high powered ass Jew motherfuckers like Clive Davis, my nigga. Damn. He got something that's incriminating that's gonna fuck somebody up that's of some important ilk. Because he fucked up when he went after them white boys with that Ciroc shit. That all it if you le- notice, all this shit took start taking place right there. That's why all this shit start happening that when he cause I don't know how true it is, but they said that. He had signed a fuck deal. Like he, how can you be mad? That the irony of that, you been fucking over niggas, and you sign a fuck deal and get fucked. Get fucked. And but you can't take the fucking that you been giving out. And it's what I was told, I don't know how true it is because I didn't research it. But maybe y'all can go research, check it out. That he signed a. Everybody thought, oh, Puffy got some rock, and he only had a couple percentages of some rock, and it was the original some rock. Once they started dropping all the flavors. They said he didn't have on none of the flavors. And when the last time you drunk original Ciroc? <laughs> I don't know why I love that shit. Okay, the shit with the blue dot. Mm. Yeah, but uh, and I honestly, man, Jay Z better be careful, man, because nigga, you standing in the water, you ain't got puffy as a shield no more, nigga. That nigga just and about the only thing that's gonna keep them white folks off of Jay Z ass is that he gonna be a good boy. And he married to Beyonce, nigga. And Beyonce probably see this and she knows she got that cake ass nigga over there. She probably started handling that nigga like a hoe. Bitch ass nigga, you need me. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Uh, Cause as long as he married to her, them white folks gonna let him make it. Cause Beyonce gonna make money for them white folks till she die, nigga. Yeah. She's a uh she that type of artist. You know what I'm saying? And and she female. She ain't like a nigga. Mike could have made money for him as long, but once he Mike got Mike was trying to get too bossy. 
behind the scenes. Yeah. Mike was trying to own shit. And he did. Yeah. And you see what they that his mama are uh, fighting for his estate. The white boy right up under Tony uh, Tommy Matola went and signed, forged that nigga will, turned mm-hmm. out his over his uh, entire estate in his name. Yeah. And they got footage of Mike in New York when the nigga is forging the will in Los Angeles. Damn. And I, I don't even understand what they mean by his mama is fighting for the estate. It's you know the nigga for how what he what she fighting for? This bitch ass nigga need to be in jail somewhere. Yeah, music industry shit. Oh deep, man. man, fuck yeah, man. Motherfuckers do shit out of control for this whole ass money, man. Yeah, for shit real. that's really worthless. Money man. and the fame and the attention and just the lifestyle. Yeah, shit that really ain't shit. Yeah. Hell yeah, um, man. They raided Diddy. You know what I'm saying? He pulled a a Russell Simmons. I feel like I'm surprised. Why you a, call it a Russell Simmons? Well, you know, uh, back in the day. Like Russell Simmons was facing similar kind of allegations, but you know how it kind of built up with Diddy. When Russell Simmons in the beginning, the first like piece of allegations, he sold all his assets in America and he moved to Bali, and that's why you see him doing all his uh, yoga and yoga shit. Yeah, shit. He hum, lives in, hum, he hum, lives hum, in, all that shit. That trying yeah. to sound like real peaceful ass nigga. But he lives in Indonesia, which has in Bali, that has uh, no, no extradition. extradition. Uh, right? I didn't know that. So, but Russell Simmons has been over there for a while. So, you know, that's why I say he pulled a Russell Simmons. He got on the private jet. Okay, but they said he wasn't on the jet. Oh, so he wasn't? Yeah. That's Talking a, about Diddy? Yeah, he wasn't on okay. his jet. It okay. was just Young Miami and her homegirls. Okay. But you also seen Young Miami got hit with the, the jet. I didn't truck. see that. So, today they said Young Miami is a possibly accused and charged of transporting pink cocaine, liquid cocaine, on a private jet whenever Diddy needed her to do stuff. You know what I'm saying? When he needed it then or he So needed- what they saying is basically Diddy is a is an undercover drug kingpin. These white folks own this And media. they also saying Young Miami is a ride or die bitch. Yeah. Then yeah. these white folks can make you out to be whatever the fuck you, <laughs> they want you to be, my nigga. Diddy is a motherfucking drug kingpin now. It's it's To me, it's looking like Drug charges. They had his family cuffed during the raid, his kids. But it's looking like it's going to be drugs charges, drug trafficking charges, and sex trafficking charges. Diddy Possibly. is a motherfucker. But no charges have been filed man. yet. You know what I'm saying? But my question to all of that is, would you consider Sean P. Diddy Combs to be a gangster? Yeah, he, he he fuck yeah. The music the music business is gangster. Everybody in that, to, it, you got to be... Have a gangster ass mentality to do people how he did, motherfuckers. You gotta be heartless, my nigga. Mm. And a gangster is a heart, a real gangster is a heartless motherfucker. The biggest gangsters wear suits, my nigga. These niggas out on the streets with their pants hanging out there, you ain't no gangster, nigga. You're a clown, my nigga. Real gangsters is in politics. Real gangsters is in the pool pits, my nigga. Niggas is gangsters, my nigga. Niggas ain't no gangsters. The niggas in, in the music business is some gangsters, nigga. Them niggas. It's some heartless niggas, and them niggas don't give a fuck about nothing, my nigga. Like, for real. That's some gangster shit with, you know, to have a nigga sign his whole life away. You <laughs> you sitting there smiling, yeah, man, we're gonna... <laughs> his uh, rights, his image, his yeah. likeness, everything. Nigga, that's some gangster shit. Nigga, the whole entertainment industry is gangster, nigga. And, you know, that's why they love these little young, naive, poor hungry, disenfranchised-ass niggas that don't know no better. That's why they make sure to keep the older generation and the younger generation separated and make the youngsters think niggas like us hating on them because they'll never listen to the game that we trying to give them. Like, nigga, don't fall for that shit. Nigga, fuck you, old hating-ass nigga. These white folks are going to give me a necklace, nigga. Shot bling, bling, bitch-ass nigga. You old broke-ass nigga. What happened to yo? Nigga, what happened to me is the white folks who I'm telling you, nigga, what's about to happen to you, dumb bitch-ass nigga. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Man, what do you... For, uh, what do you think about the young generation, like as a whole? Let's scratch Diddy. Just on the young generation, from what you see, I also see you work with a lot of young people now. Fuck yeah. What do you? What is your your understanding and your perspective of the new young generation? They just, you know, uh, they coming up in a different time, and you just got to 
you got to conversate with them. They some they some funny cats, man. They and they some uh they ingenuity and they creativity is next level because the shit that they got at their disposal and the shit that they got at their fingertips, we didn't grow up with. And this is what the world is becoming and transitioning into. And ain't shit that a nigga my age or any other nigga of any age can do to stop it. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to get on board with what how society going or you just going to fall by the wayside. And, you know, I, by fucking with them and kicking with it, you, you know, it's a bridge there. They, they not. I'm not no nigga that's going to say that they totally lost or they're totally helpless because it's a lot of shit that. We don't understand about the world today and about society and, you know, and if you sit down and talk to them, them niggas can, can explain that shit and kind of help you get get an understanding of the world today and of society today. And you'll get a better understanding of why shit is like it is, be it good or bad. And you know, these little young niggas, man, they got a lot to offer, man. They really do. They got a lot to offer because this world... I'm an old nigga, man. I'm 48, finna be 59, nigga. I might got... He said know. I'm 48, finna be 59. I mean, 49, <laughs> my bad. Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> but, but not for you, though. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, who knows how long I got, but I know more than likely I got less time than left than I do, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not wishing it on me, but, you know, that's why I wake up, eat right, and... Try to go to the gym every motherfucking day, my nigga. But yeah, these youngsters, man, they got some. They got something to say, like Andre three thousand at the Source Award. <laughs> real shit. Real they shit. got something to say, man. You just gotta listen to them, you know. And and I I chop it up with them, and I give them game, and I don't just dismiss. I don't just dismiss what they think or what they feel as irrelevant or immature or asinine or it ain't worth my time because. Anybody can give you some useful information and help you out, nigga. I done got some of my best game from dope fiends. If I'm out on the block and a dope fiend walk by and say, hey, man, I seen them laws suiting up uh, around the corner. I ain't going to listen to him because he a dope fiend. Or oh, get your bitch ass around from, from around here. Then as soon as the laws jump out, bitch ass nigga lay it down. Damn, that whole ass nigga said they was around the corner. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah, man. I think the young people nowadays, man, they they deal with so much influence, so much going on, so much. You know what I'm saying? They I do. It's yeah, it's I all. I take my hat off to the younger generation. You know, coming out, they they deal with a lot. You know what I call this? I call this the age of information overload. Overload, man. Cause it's just coming from everywhere. It's nonstop. Like everything happens in real time today, and like. You got to be a special individual for you for if you make a splash or you become relevant and if your relevance carries on. You know what I'm saying? Like because shit happens so fast. Like when shit happens, motherfuckers turn to me to see what I got to say about it. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's crazy within itself, being that a lot of motherfuckers out here got voices and got opinions not everybody deserves to have a voice and opinion because some of y'all just some biscuit head ass <laughs> motherfuckers that really can't think like some real stew head motherfuckers you know what i'm saying i try to be fair and i try to be just i poke fun at, at motherfuckers and uh i talk a lot of shit but i also try to make sure that whatever it is i try to give you a full 360 view of whatever it is and tr really try to give you a lot of insight and a lot of game on shit, man, because motherfuckers need that more than ever, even though everybody ain't going to agree with everybody and everything that everybody say, because life is funny that way. Life shows everybody. So it's like Candace Owens, you know, trying to not she pro black all of a sudden. I don't know how the fuck it happened. I believe the funky bitch when I see her <laughs> with a natural and a dashiki on. <laughs> Man, she, she not she not Omar, uh, Umar approved because I think her husband white. Yeah, but but <laughs> but who cares? But nah, but now nah, she she trying to pivot and, and be yeah. pro black again because them white folks fired her funk ass, bitch. They, them white folks break they motherfucking toys after they get through playing with them funky bitch. You thought that, I don't know why these niggas be thinking that they special, my nigga. 
Oh, these white folks, they love me. They ain't going to do me like that. Man, these white folks use you up. And, you know, that bitch said that shit about the Jews and the Palestine. And white folks showed that funky bitch. Bitch, you don't go against our agenda. Now she's going to Joe Budden and Breakfast Club. And I, I know that she's making her rounds now. Yeah, through. and black media and black dumb, media, stupid yeah. niggas. Oh, oh man, fuck that fucking yeah. bitch. Man, that whole, that's just playing the game. She got <laughs> all of the pointers and, and all the uh, pinpoints from all these white folks. And she just running the same game on you dumb niggas that she got from these white folks. Because they told her, man, niggas is dumb. These niggas going to buy that shit. Yeah, don't believe the hype, man. Don't believe the hype. dumbass niggas, man. I hate niggas. Fuck y'all niggas, man. You niggas, man, I nigga wouldn't piss on you niggas if y'all was on fire because y'all so goddamn <laughs> dumb, man. You niggas is dumb, my nigga. Because we fucked up, man. And, you know, motherfuckers, you know, I look at Candace as a, as a, a double agent of divisiveness, but a motherfucker can equally say that I'm an agent of divisiveness because they could say... I should be embracing a motherfucker like Candace because in all actuality for black people to truly liberate ourselves, we're going to need all black people. And if we can't get all black people, we need enough black people that can scare the ones that ain't with it. Mm. Because if we if we can't have all be on on code together, it's never going to work because you're going to always have niggas second guessing and running back to the other op to the opposition selling us out. Yeah. And any and it's hard to tell because a nigga can just weasel his way back in because niggas just accept any as long as the white man say a nigga is okay, they okay with a nigga. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel you. Man, uh, shout out to Candace Owens, man. We're gonna we're gonna go in. Matter of fact, we're gonna go in on Candace. Next interview, we got we gonna you know what I'm saying. We well, gonna, that motherfucker might not even be relevant next interview because <laughs> wife she didn't lost that that white folk light, yeah, so her shit real. gonna dim more and more and more like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because the white folks is her light came from the white folks, and now that they didn't took that motherfucking that blanket of protection off of her, her shit gonna dim more and more and more. She's scratching though. She's scratching though. Yeah, she trying. She playing the shit out <laughs> these niggas. She just uh. She said the shit about Palestine, and then she tried to speak up for Diddy. She trying to win niggas' approval because she trying to keep, you She know. said the Kanye West shit. She was trying to support Kanye yeah. at one point. Yeah, but that, her and Kanye was on some other shit. Bitch, let me see you eat a plate of chitlins, fucking bitch. Then I... <laughs> <laughs> did, you see, did you see when she was on The Breakfast Club? Yeah, they asked her, God is. God is good. Yeah, God is good. The bitch couldn't ask. Let me tell you something. She's like, amen. Hey, yeah, this is what I'm telling you, man. This bitch here did not feel that she needed to be connected to niggas in no kind of way, my nigga. Right. This here, this now all of a sudden. Yeah, this statement is a staple in black community, my nigga. You don't, and they, they, you don't even got to go to church to know this to statement, know my this. nigga. A nigga would say that shit in the grocery aisle, uh, getting some vegetables, and you damn near, uh, fall over the basket or trip over the basket and you be like, oh, I caught myself. Motherfucker be like, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Yeah. And this ain't... This Second is, nature. Yeah. This is just something. I don't know where the fuck it came from or how, but it penetrated black pop culture. And this bitch here do not know it. That tell me everything uh -huh. I need to know about that hoe. All the time. God is good, man. Yeah. That tell me every... If, bitch, if you don't know simple black shit... <laughs> Like this is the 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 basic the baseline. Yeah, nigga, this is kindergarten black shit. <laughs> this shit here is like coloring and nap time, funky bitch. Yeah. You can't even nap good, funky bitch. For real, for real. The fuck? Crazy man. I'm gonna step back on the uh, the youth a little bit. We go back on the youth. That was some good. shit. was talking about Candace though. I didn't even think it was go that way, but that was no. good shit. But uh, back on the youth, man. Uh, I got two ways I want to go, but I'm gonna go with. I see you working with the youth a lot now. I just said that, but um, you got these 20 versus ones you're doing. You're doing the street interviews. I noticed it like as soon as 2024 hit, you started giving us some different shit. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe before, but it's like as soon as 2024 hit, it's like you started working with a lot of young people. You started work doing a lot of street interviews. And, I, and I, I ain't, I'm not going to sit here. Let me. Let me. Let me be honest and truthful about it because I don't want motherfuckers. This wasn't by any grand design. I stumbled into that. And 
and the universe lined it up and that was the universe is doing. Sure. It, it wasn't it wasn't anything that it all started. Shout out to Mike Adela Boo. That's that's the interview that kicked it off mm -hmm. where I was telling the nigga about cock and you know that shit shot off and all them youngsters seen the type of numbers he did and how it turned him into a celebrity overnight because he didn't he didn't want the interview. I I met him at Penthouse. It was Horseman's birthday. Okay. And me and Horseman walked out of Penthouse talking. He asked Horseman for an interview. Mm. And Horseman done an interview. And before Horseman walked off, Horseman told him, man, you need to interview Smack. And Mike looked at me like, who the fuck is he? And I told him, I said, nigga, your shit finna go up. And he like, <laughs> bitch ass nigga, don't nobody know who you is. But he interviewed me anyway. He didn't want the interview. Yeah. And when he posted it, and I just like I told him, I say, nigga, your page gonna go crazy, nigga. Yeah, now y'all, it's like y'all got a, a. Yeah, yeah, we got like, a, a a healthy worker. I like it, man. Mike is like a that. good nigga, man. He little young nigga and him, and they it's a whole crew of them, and that's how I ended up getting plugged in with them young niggas because he asked me to come to a twenty versus one, and like I said, all of them saw what Mike did, and they was hoping that I could do that for their page, and the majority of them, you know, got a lot of shine. Way more shine. If you go to them niggas' pages, ain't my my post on their pages. The, Turn them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, Houston has. I don't know why Houston does, but Houston has like one of the biggest influencer culture. Like, like of all the cities, Houston has like the biggest like social media influence. The people who do the pranks, the street interviews, like it's big down here. So much to the point that way back in January when we had the freeze. Uh, was it February when we had February? A, February, there was a girl from Tallahassee, Florida, who moved out here with her kids to become an influencer and got stuck in the freeze. Had to go to the shelter. I am. I ain't yeah. see that. But have you noticed that though? That our influencer culture is like humongous. Uh, I know that it's it's heavy, but I didn't. In comparison to another area, another city, or another state, I really haven't tried to gauge it. But I know our shit because like. I be in the mix with them and I see them and like everybody. See, the thing about this uh, social media shit, it's kind of like rap. Everybody damn near think they can do it or comedy. Yeah. Everybody think they're a funny motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, and that influence shit, especially when you do it like to the level that I do it and you make it look so effortless and so easy, motherfucker like, oh, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? But motherfuckers don't. I've been doing this shit for nine years. Every day getting on here giving you niggas content. Think about that, my nigga. Nine years straight. Nine I'm years talking about you're a staple. Right? Before Kevin Samuels, before Charleston, before I was hot, before all of them niggas. The only nigga that I can name that was doing this shit before me is Nino Brown 304. And I didn't even know who the fuck he was. After I started doing it, somebody sent me one grape. And I was like, this is a crazy nigga. My nigga Rito. Shout out to my nigga Rito. He the one who put me on Nino Brown 3. He was like, Smack, you ever seen this nigga? And I was like, nah, because I wasn't on that shit. I just stumbled onto this shit. And so, but he, the rest of these niggas, man, that's my blueprint and my format. These that talking this real shit. Yeah, I'm the they, they, I'm the realest nigga on the ground, my nigga. And it's not nine years where they start calling me the realest nigga on the ground. About a year after I started, I didn't make that up. Niggas start calling me that, and I've been eight years, and it's yet that anybody has come along and motherfuckers have dubbed them realer than me on the ground, my nigga. Think about I, that. I definitely give you that. that I give you, and that why, the reason why I bring up the the, the influencer community is because I think subconsciously you probably not have thought about it, but you're taking them under your wing. But if when you if you after this interview you go and look into it, Houston is like the mecca for influencers. Yeah, I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't. Like I said, I have and, and now you're you're breeding a new. Like generation, yeah, yeah, for real. I yeah, see it, yeah. and it's crazy though. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I fathered all these niggas, man. All these, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm all these niggas. I fathered all these niggas. Yeah. All, anybody that's on online talking real shit, I'm the first nigga that got on here and just was talking unadulterated and unfiltered, calling niggas bitch ass niggas and calling shit out like that. That my nigga. Everybody else was trying to be political and all this here shit here. I ain't, I started that shit, nigga, and I ain't fucked up about it. I ain't, Cause 
Credit, not everybody want credit today. Credit kill the cat. I didn't watch credit kill. Nigga, credit is part of the reason that kill Rockefeller. Because niggas wanted credit. Nigga, I done this. I done this. Nigga, you ain't start me. Nigga, I, I made myself. Credit is a motherfucker. Credit is a form of currency. Now, I don't know how. I don't know how far. I guess maybe because you could tell somebody, or oh, I started this, or that was my idea, and they might be like, or somebody who got some money. Well, you got another idea? Mm -hmm. Is it worth something? Maybe that's why niggas do it. But, you know, and I'm not doing it for credit. I'm just doing it just to state a motherfucking fact that, man, these niggas exist because of me. These niggas seen me and these, I, these niggas liked it what I did. And if they didn't see me, they saw somebody who saw me or, or the shit just carried on to, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I started that shit. And I really didn't think I was doing anything special by doing it. I was just... Being me and just talking the shit that I've been talking my whole life. Real shit, man. Yeah. It's an expression, man. For real. Yeah. But you don't get none of these niggas if you don't got me, my nigga. You don't get these <laughs> niggas, man. Nah, yeah. real shit. I can, I can attest to that, man. I definitely feel like, man, your lame is like, it's it's unique and like, for real. Original, yeah. original. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. For and it, it was an evolution. It didn't start off where I'm at. And I'm still evolving. And I don't, you know, because I come up with new Everybody know you. That's the crazy thing. Yeah. Everybody. Like, you're famous. I am. Super famous. Do you like fame? It's all right. It's cool. I don't, I'm, I'm not fucked up because I've been famous my whole life. I got you. I got you know you. what I'm saying? I tell motherfuckers that all the time. Who's famous? Huh? Who's famous? Yeah. yeah. My mama was one of the baddest bitches in Acres Home. All the niggas wanted to put dick on my tea lady. <laughs> my pops was an infamous street nigga. Everybody knew him. Yeah. He, was a, he was a heroin addict, but he was a gangster. Everybody knew him. When he got up pregnant, the whole hood, my family was here in Acres Home the day it started. My nigga, I got a street named after my family. Yeah. My grandfather, I just posted him, man, uh, rest in peace and happy birthday to my grandfather, Johnny Clyde Copeland. Grammy Award winner, my nigga. Yeah. A diplomat. My grandmother was Miss Jack Yates, 1955. Yeah, you got now, my nigga, my DNA is greatness, my nigga. That's not, that's, the universe designed me specifically to check you bitch ass niggas and funky bitches. That's why I'm here. Facts. <laughs> Cake ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. Man, we talking about the youth, you know what I'm saying? The imprint, the footprint that you laid down in Houston. But I want to stay on them two things of just Houston and the youth. Yeah. And I want to talk about. A basketball player named Jalen Green, <laughs> who plays for the Houston Rockets. <laughs> hey, nigga, hey, nigga, you been balling out of control, KK, nigga. 22-year-old Jalen Green. That hoe put that pussy on you, nigga. You didn't lost your mind, nigga. I seen you put up a 40 ball the other night, nigga. I two 40 balls back to back. That nigga, <laughs> nigga, that old, that old cock good. Ain't, ain't she, how old is she, 42? She's, she's 40. 40? Oh, he's, I'm about he's 22. He's, I know he, he's but I'm saying. He's I, like one month older than her oldest child. Yeah, I thought I thought he was putting up numbers to match her age like a motherfucker. <laughs> I, like, um, I thought he's trying to make a, a you know, like a, a statement to, of his love like a motherfucker. Bitch, I'm going to hit your age tonight, fucking bitch. I'm going to show you how much this put. That pussy must be good, nigga, because this nigga here look like a young Jordan, nigga. He, he been balling, man. Man, that pussy good than a motherfucker, nigga. Uh, uh, he trying to get that new contract high in the motherfucker. You know that whole finna sticking with some mean child support. <laughs> man, so man, you niggas gotta stop playing, y'all. Man, you athletes and entertainers and rappers and 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 it just young niggas coming up. Man, you niggas. But I really fought the niggas who came before y'all, my nigga, because like all you older basketball players, man, y'all know these traps, these hoes set for these And I understand you could only tell a motherfucker so much. And it's out here for niggas to see. I don't know how niggas fall in, into that, that trap. And I can understand you might have grew up fantasizing about putting dick on that hoe because she is a bad bitch. I, you can't take And she in her 40s and the bitch is cracking some of these hoes in her they 20s. Yeah. But... To put a baby in but this she, hoe. she got a reputation, though. Yeah, man, this whole, man, this whole get on, man. This bitch, uh, you know, and that's just what niggas then exposed about it. You don't even know all the other shit. This bitch might be a uh, Tiana Trump mentor. Who the fuck knows? You know what I'm saying? Is that a, is that a big L for him? You know, 
from my from my, how I see it, yeah, but how he see it, all that really matters is how he see it. You know I, what I'm saying? I think a lot of them young niggas that's especially in the NBA, like they getting so much money, they don't even give. Yeah, a niggas fuck. don't and young niggas don't give a fuck at all. Niggas, yeah. niggas is wife and straight hoes, my nigga. That's crazy. Yeah, Kanye is to blame for that shit, man. He started the whole white. Yeah, night. Kanye just started turning hoes into housewives, man. Crazy. And you know, making these hoes hoes is getting famous for the nigga they fucking. Yeah, it's crazy. Bitch ain't got no talent whatsoever. You ask that bitch what you do. I fuck so so and so. Bitch, what do you do? Nigga, I fuck so and so. These bitches don't have no talent. You can see them all. Go to a bitch page and just scroll. All you see, bitch just showing her ass, just showing her ass, shaking her ass. Bitch, you don't, that's all you got. But then as soon as a nigga approach you as a sex object, you get offended. What the fuck is we talking about, man? Make this shit make sense, my nigga. That's and that's they playing this trick on on society with this youth. They want everybody to be stuck in a young mind state, a young foolish mind state. I'm too old for that shit, man. I didn't been around the block too many times, man. For for me not to see this shit and say something and be like, nigga, this shit don't look weird to y'all. This shit don't. This shit look crazy, my nigga. Yeah. I don't know, man. But the youngsters, they they just think about this, my nigga. These kids being born will not know what it is to have a mama that's not a hoe. A grandma. A grandma. That pray for you and cook and just. Yeah, man. They, yeah. yeah, man. These niggas, 90% of the babies, they mama is going to, and I don't mean a hoe as in selling pussy, but a, a hoe on the internet is all the same. Bitch, you got a, a Instagram page, you do anything sexual, for for anything, for likes, comments, views, money, whatever the fuck. You a hoe. Keep the lights on to get your baby clothes out of layaway. For a drink. To get a ride home. Whatever the fuck. Just don't be a dumb hoe. So, or a broke hoe if you fuck with me. <laughs> fuck it, bitch. All right, so has Drea reached the level, like... Of that retiring, she 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 reached the level that these because Jalen Green about to get that new contract next yeah, year. Yeah, she could retire. She could she, she, she could hang up her jersey in the rest. She gonna hang yeah. up her jersey for that cake ass nigga hang up his. She hit the peak. She she basically. I don't think she made it the the goal the, the final goal. You know she got a young nigga. He yeah. gonna break bread. Yeah, he ain't got no choice but to do that. He ain't that. got no choice. He I think the Rockets. Max Jalen Green out next year, 275. He been balling. He been balling. 275. He I'm going to say balling. 275. From what I've been seeing of him lately, and if 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 they push past Golden State to make the playoffs, even though they're going in at 10th seed and probably going to get knocked off in the first round. That's you know, still an accomplishment. Yeah, that's still an accomplishment to go from the bottom of, 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 of the division and the bottom at the bottom tier of the, of, of, of the Western Conference. To the playoffs, so you know, and he been balling. I can't take none. I ain't, you know, I ain't hating on the young nigga, but it, you know, hoes is made to be hoes, man. You niggas is, y'all niggas is loving hoes, man. Y'all, man, this shit here is crazy, my nigga. Like it's crazy. you niggas ain't listening to no too short or or Luke or culture different, man. Different than a motherfucker, nigga. They, these niggas is actually offended if you call a hoe a hoe, nigga. Yes, yeah, this everything has been ironed out. It's almost that they want everybody to be equal, everything on the same. Everybody is yeah. not equal, my nigga. I don't I don't think I agree with you. So I don't you know everybody is not equal. I think not only They just want the yeah. appearance. Of course. Of yeah. course. But everybody is not equal, my nigga. You gotta put in the effort, the time, the work. You come from different everybody's different, everything. Yeah, everybody would never be equal, my nigga, because society and the construct of of humanity isn't built for it. Equality, but I, I think that notion of perceivable, everybody is free, everybody can do what they want, everybody has a nice illusion. Everybody has an equal opportunity and a and a hand at the pot. No. I think that kind of uh, what's the word like supports the capitalist ideas. Yeah, in America. yeah. it's an illusion. It it all loves it all loves people into a false sense of purpose. A false sense of accomplishment, a, a, a false sense of self-worth. 
You know what I'm saying? A, a, a bunch of different things. Uh, you're free. No, nah, you ain't free. Try to leave this motherfucker without a passport. See how free you is, nigga. You don't be in jail, bitch ass nigga. Man, they, they said Diddy and Cape Verde, they looking for that ass. Yeah, they stopped that mother. He tried it. Yeah, they tried. He tried. He tried. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely tried. He get a E for effort like a motherfucker. He waited too he, long. He should have put. See, he probably he, he probably Sim wanted to guess best that ever did it. Yeah, for sure. Russell Simmons got ghost immediately for oh, the first. Before, yeah, the before. First, the uh, first little like you know. What I'm saying? And see, that's what Diddy. He stuck around because he thought he could. Diddy should have dipped. When Keefe D got locked up for the Tupac, and he started so talking, like, Diddy should have caught out right gotten, then, yeah, and it, all that shit would have disappeared. Yeah, Everything would have dis. But yeah. you know, uh, Russell, like we say, Russell is on a yoga tip. Diddy, I, when when it comes to you know, you got some spots around the world that's enjoyable. I've never been, but they're enjoyable. But ain't nothing like America, especially if you got money, my nigga. Facts, man. Facts. You have a good ass time in America if you got money and power and fame and success, man. You have a great fucking time. And the the I imagine the high you feel. You know what I'm saying? Fucking any bitch you wanna fuck. Well in Diddy case, fucking anybody you wanna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anybody. <laughs> Just living. Having money. <laughs> Damn, I thought, I wish I would have said that. Oh, man, <laughs> that you was got funny. It, man. You got nah, it. you got that one. You got that one off like a well. <laughs> Shout out to Green Road. For real, though. That nigga but I funny. get what you're saying, though. Yeah. I get what you're saying, yeah. man. That's America, man. <laughs> Fucking anybody. That's America. Yeah, that nigga, that is shit. When that nigga said Diddy Bop. <laughs> For real. For real, nigga. We was talking Still. about uh, Jalen Green. Like, we was talking about all that shit. We was talking about the youngsters in Houston, but we're going to stay in Houston. Yeah. We're going to stay in Houston. So, um, two nights ago, Jay Prince Jr. posts uh, a picture on Instagram advertising yeah, I've seen that. a bowling party. And it's, you know what I'm saying, DM for the details, address, all that. Yeah. But I've it comes that. one day after the bowling alley that Takeoff got murdered in was sued by a family. And then I kind of feel like he was trolling because he deleted it. So when you saw, when you saw that, what did you think? <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't know you informed me of the situation with the bowling alley being sued that it took place. But I just thought it was it was kind of I was it was kind of crazy. It was just out of nowhere. Uh, the when I first read it, the uh, takeoff shit didn't hit me immediately. It was like an afterthought, like after I scrolled past it, and then I was on Instagram and I scrolled past it, and maybe like two posts after it, that's when it hit me. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> no, nah, that's not wise at all, my nigga. Like, I, I didn't even know he took it down or not, but it just, it just was a quick thought. I was like, damn, damn, I don't think he probably should have like posted that, my nigga, because it's too. Even though, like, I really thought that it was another event that he was doing, but I was like, damn, nigga, that's, you know, I don't know if I want to go to that nigga bowling party. Man, <laughs> man if, you, if you go to the comment section, they're going crazy. <laughs> I bet they the would. Uh, yeah, but I, that's what I thought when I when I caught the snap. Uh, I was like, nah, I wouldn't want to go to that nigga boat. <laughs> bowling party. <laughs> nah, <for real. laughs> what do you think it was his motive for doing that, though? I don't know, Especially man. Especially during that time. I don't know, man. Junior, Junior is his own own little event individual, man. Uh, I just, me and him, have spoke several times, you know, and uh, it's always cordial and cool for the most part. Whenever we we are uh, speaking stuff, and and I've told him sometimes. I've told him we was in fifty fifteen. I let him know. I'm like, my nigga, all you got to do, the throne is yours, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You next in line for the throne. All you got to do is just chill and just be the king, my nigga. You ain't just really got to do nothing extra because everything is lined up for you. You know what I'm saying? You next in line. But, you know, like I really didn't even really, like I said, it was an afterthought. I really didn't think anything of it. I just thought to myself, like, yeah, I, that's a bowling party. I wouldn't be going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm not fit to. I'm not fit to DM for them motherfuckers for that invitation. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. Yeah. 
Do you ever think he might be kind of a bit overzealous? Like you say, all you got to do is relax and take the throne. Do you think at times he's a bit overzealous when it comes to the street image? Mm, well, everybody know who his daddy is and everybody know that uh, Jay Prince been a mogul and Jay Prince been successful his whole life. And, you know, growing up with a father that was associated with gangster rap and associated with the streets, but then you grew up, you know, rich, motherfuckers automatically think you grow up rich, spoiled, sheltered, you know, it's it's a certain uh, way people perceive kids that grow up with money or grow up with rich parents or successful parents where they don't have to struggle, but your parents struggled and got it out the mud. And so you always got to challenge that thought process that you'll never be the person that your parent was because your parent got it from where we come from. So niggas who still there, they are, they, he in a no-win situation because what, if he kill a nigga, niggas gonna be like, nigga, that was dumb. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nigga, you ain't have to kill that nigga. Your daddy is Jay Prince. Nigga, you got all this money, but you kill a nigga trying to prove to niggas that you're a real nigga. But if you don't kill a nigga, you a whole ass nigga or a soft ass nigga. That nigga ain't got ain't built like that. You ain't got no win with bitch ass niggas. So you might as well just live a life, nigga, and be a king and just, you know, let niggas just do what niggas do, my nigga. Don't you ain't got to try to prove none of these niggas because you ain't gonna win with niggas. Cause niggas ain't gonna let you win. Cause you're gonna be a whole ass nigga to a nigga whether you do or you don't. If you kill a nigga, you're a whole ass nigga. If you don't kill a nigga, you're a whole ass nigga. To the exact same nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lose lose. Yeah, fuck these niggas, man. You know, fuck, you ain't gotta prove nothing to nobody, my nigga. All you gotta do is live life, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause, you know. I didn't. I never tried to prove. I was just in a situation where I had to prove to myself that I could survive and I could make it through this whole ass shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I wouldn't wish poverty or 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 growing up in an ignorant society or where where motherfuckers a backward society where it, where violence is 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 nurtured and and part of our nature and and. It's, it's the answer to everything. Like, I got an uncle, my nigga, don't smoke a drink, but violence is his answer. He choose violence. Every day he wake up, he every choose time. violence. Every time. You know what I'm saying? That's his answer for everything. Yeah. My whole community, 790, the ghetto nigga, that was the answer to everything, nigga. It wasn't no diplomacy. Talk it out. Man, you get to get the shit beat out of you, my nigga. Everybody might click on you. Nigga, you trying to do what? Yeah. There wasn't no peace talks. There wasn't no peace in Acres Home when I was growing up, man. That shit didn't exist, my nigga. It wasn't no such thing, my nigga. Yeah. You settle shit through violence. Didn't Jay Prince Jr. like come up in Acres Home in somewhat of a way? Nah, not Jr. I had a talk with, with Jay Prince, and he was like, I ain't say that, but I vividly remember him saying it, but, I, you know. I was I was tipsy, so I just chalk it up to because the night we we met, I was you know rolling and I was down in bottles of shampoo. I was on my bed doing my best shit, so I was <laughs> yeah, nigga, I was having that money, nigga. You couldn't tell me nothing, nigga. I was I was young Michael Coleone in the city, nigga. In my mind, nigga, I was moving young nigga, move that word. <laughs> Did you ever see my last interview with Boston George? I seen clips of it. Okay. I didn't. I didn't see the whole thing. It's a, and I'm gonna be totally honest. It's only one motherfucking podcast episode that I didn't sat down and watch the entire episode. I don't even watch the entire episodes of my shit, my nigga. Yeah. But the only one I watched is Club Shay Shay with Cat Wig. Yeah. I, I watched yeah. uh yeah. Drink Champs the the short the or uh, shortened version on Revolt TV when it's yeah. an hour. Yeah. But them two three hour shits, my nigga. I, I you know, watched the whole Cat Williams too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I that's watched probably that. one of the most recent full things I watched. Yeah, too. I don't, I don't yeah. watch. You know, if I see clips, you know, I watch that shit because sometimes interviews can get longer, and I ain't, you know, and I, you know, I if a nigga turn my shit off, I ain't fucked up about it because you know a nigga like, oh that nigga, 
a nigga want to hear me say cake ass nigga every two, three minutes or some type of shit. Nigga, I ain't, ain't, a lot of niggas ain't tuning in to hear me talk all this political or this insight or this knowledgeable shit. Nigga, I don't want to hear that whole ass shit. Nigga, where the laughs at, bitch ass nigga? You know what I'm talking about? For sure. I only asked that because in that interview, Boston George said that uh, James Jr. was in the trenches with him, hustling, grinding, pushing up. You know what I'm saying? But he's, basically he made the point that Jazz and James come in different in the lineage of the family of, I guess, provision based upon their mothers. So he said Junior was really out in the streets. I, I, he possibly was. I don't, yeah. I, you know, them niggas is up under me. Yeah. And while they was doing their thing, I possibly was locked up or whatever. I don't, and, <laughs> nah, real shit. Not uh, real. Yeah, uh, and I wasn't never one to know niggas. Like, if I didn't have a direct uh, business, which, like, I got partners that know everything that's going on in the streets and know every, every nigga from, I don't give a fuck about it. Me and my pops, may he rest in peace, we used to argue about that shit all the time because he'd be like, our homeboy. I'd be like, what homeboy? He'd be like, such and such. I'd be like, nigga, I don't know what the fuck you, nigga, you know. I don't know. I don't give a fuck about no nigga, my nigga. I don't, if that nigga ain't somebody that I fuck with, I don't give a fuck. Like, I just had to uh, check this nigga to talk. He know me. Nigga trying to tell me about a nigga that know me. I'm like, who? Yeah. And then a nigga going to talk about, uh, I know Smack Water. I can get Smack Water to do anything. I say, he a bitch ass lie, nigga. Because if he knew me, he know I'd slap the shit out of a nigga. Talking about he, nigga, my mama can't get me to do anything, nigga. Fuck is you, bitch ass nigga. And you don't know me, my nigga. You know of me, my nigga. If we ain't never hustled. Done no dirt, uh, broke bread, my nigga. You don't know me, my nigga. Just cause you see me, I was, I, I might share last with a nigga kicking my nigga. You don't know me, my nigga. Like you really don't, my nigga. That's how some of these niggas get this social media shit fucked up. Cause they are ha ha ha. Now, nigga, I go upside your motherfucking head, nigga. For real, I really. That's not who I'm trying. I'm not trying to be no hard ass nigga. Cause I ain't, you know, them days where I try to, I, you know, I'm ninety five percent. A changed nigga, man. I, <laughs> you got that still five, though. Yeah, and five, though. the five show up in the gym. That's when, okay, okay. to myself, I realize that I'm still an asshole. Because yeah. when I'm in, I go to Planet Fitness and they don't just have a lot of equipment and when motherfuckers see me working out, because I superset, I go around, I get up. But nigga don't see me working on a machine and then you come sit your bitch ass down there taking selfies and on... Do your set, get your bitch ass up. It's gym etiquette, my nigga. You see it ain't a bunch of motherfucking machines in here, whole ass nickel. I feel you. That shit that run me high just thinking about that bitch ass shit. But yeah, I'm an asshole when it comes to working out though, my nigga. That's, that's why I know that I still got the potential to be a fucked up individual when I be in the gym. Okay, how about this? Over the years, throughout the years, have you noticed that the image of a gangster has changed? Hell yeah. How, what do you think is the way it changed the most? You can't really tell when it, well, like I said earlier, a gangster, the most gangster motherfuckers is like politicians and preachers and shit like that to me. But like on a street level, it's hard to tell who the fuck a uh, nigga that say they're a gangster is today. Like it used to be clear cut, like or uh, maybe my eye is just foreign to my eyes. Maybe these young niggas can relate because they got their own look. Like we had a look of niggas who, okay, this is a street nigga, and you know, dickies, uh, muscle shirts, or uh, white tees. Like we had our own little uniform. Now these niggas, these niggas dressing like motherfucking LGBT flags, my nigga. I don't know. But the nigga, nigga. Turn your TV off, nigga. Nigga, scramble your noodles like a motherfucker. With a person. <laughs> yeah, like a motherfucker. Reach up in his handbag like a motherfucker. Bitch ass nigga, you don't do me. <laughs> you be like, God damn, old ass nigga. <laughs> nigga, hold the gun like this here. <laughs> God damn, bitch ass nigga, you win, my nigga. Now, whole ass nigga, say that shit now. <laughs> nah, you funny as hell, man. <laughs> nah, all that crazy. nigga. These niggas still, man, I don't know, my nigga. And maybe that's these niggas' gangster uniform today, my nigga. I don't know. Shit, I don't know. Man, <laughs> at, at what point did you 
like start to really notice when did it turn with like the to being a gangster change? Matter of fact, when, I, you, what you, when, when you say change, uh, matter of fact, we because gangster is gangster, so I don't. When you say change, like, this, this is what I'm getting at. We had a conversation off camera once, and you said that John Gotti is the person that destroyed the image of being gangster. Yeah, when, well, when not, well, when I meant what I meant by that is he the one who made uh like being flamboyant okay. as far as. I'm a gangster, I announcing mean, that I'm a gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. As as a announce niggas done it in, you know, well, niggas ain't do it in well, they done it in hip hop, but it was because of John Gotti. John Gotti was the first one to really flaunt gangsterism. Like, nigga, here I am. A gangster is in the building, ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because gangster was quiet, it was discreet. You know, that's why. That's why the mob dressed like, because the mob said the true gangsters were the politicians. That's why the mobsters wore suits. Because they wanted to, they said, well, we're going to be like the real gangsters and be able to, to, to intermingle and mix in with the real gangsters because the real gangsters is politicians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And John Gotti came and threw all that shit out the window. You know what I'm saying? John Gotti flaunted it and he, he adored the press and all the, the uh, accolades and the adoration from motherfuckers and, you know, motherfuckers didn't appreciate John Gotti doing that, man, putting gangsterism on, on the front street and that the shit just evolved and just just continued to decay and just fall further and further and now niggas is online with gangster shit. Nigga, you, a nigga will sell you a whole motherfucking half ounce on <laughs> <laughs> It started with John Gotti. Yeah, my nigga John Gotti put it on front street. You feel like he left a stain on the gangster game? Yeah, well, he definitely, uh, he definitely shifted the culture when it came to gotcha, gangster. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I feel you. No, I felt I, 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 I wanted to ask you that because I felt like that was interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he because definitely. Because you can, you can see it all throughout the culture, the music, everything. You yeah, know because that shit used to be real discreet. It was a point of time to where if you called a gangster a gangster. Nigga, they got on your ass, nigga. The nigga, when you used to say, uh, the mafia, La Cosa Nostra, they were like, nigga, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. And they in it the whole while. But they were like, nigga, that shit ain't don't exist. Nigga, that shit is a myth. It's crazy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Now, <clears throat> now I know you're a commentarian, not a comedian. Yeah, you know that shit. Nigga. I know that. But I want to talk about comedians because 2024... Has been the year. It's the year of uh, comedians. The East Coast, West Coast, beat yeah, yeah. Of comedy. <laughs> yeah, I want to go. That's ahead. a good analogy. Like it's, a going, it's up right now. Yeah, yeah. Comedy yeah, is. You know what I'm saying? Cat yeah. Williams bomb first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cat <laughs> yeah, yeah. jumped out the window head yeah. first, nigga. Yeah. He put all that shit on Front Street, man. Cat and nigga, the year started off like that, nigga, so I knew this shit was going to be crazy, my nigga. Like, Cat kicked the dough in on 2024, my nigga. I feel nigga. like this year people are going all out for content. That nigga said everything will be revealed in 2024. This nigga is not lying. <laughs> he, out, he out there running on the track. He doing every, he running 40-yard dashes. Shit's you saw how that nigga had a little bit. <laughs> Shit lit right now, though. Oh, that nigga, that cat. Well, cat it. But, you know, shout out to Cat, man. I... He 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 cool with me, man. Why he came when he came to Houston, I hooked up that Willie D interview uh for for Willie like a motherfucker. Shout out to Willie D. And you know, me and Cat and, and Mark Cooper and uh I mean uh Mark Curry, excuse me, uh and Red Grant. We hung out backstage and uh we hung out the next day at, at Willie D shit, man, and Cat gave me some real insight, and we just chopped it up and kicked it like a motherfucker, man. He cool nigga with me, but I, I also had to let him know, because uh, the first time I met him was at trade eight when he brought when he brought Dave Chappelle out on stage, and we was kicking it backstage, and uh, you know, he called, and and I ain't told Ali Sadiq this, but I told Cat in front of Willie D, right there in front of, because Cat. When he told me, he was like, nigga, I'm going to call somebody a cake-ass nigga. It didn't click. I didn't know who he was talking about. And then when I cut the camera on, he called Ali Sadiq. He like, yeah, 
I mean, yo city cake ass nigga. And he went in on Ali Sadiq. And anybody who go look at it, they'll see me go like, ha. Oh. And in my mind, I already knew I was going to edit it because I, and I told him right there in front of Will, I was like, man, I, that, you know, I didn't, Ali, I fuck with Ali. You cool too, but I fuck with Ali and Ali from my city. And plus y'all two grown men, man, I'm not going to. He was like, you should have posted it. And, you know, he took another jab at me later. And he's, because uh, it was something. He said, you probably just go edit that too. I said, oh, you a funny nigga. <laughs> but yeah, I edited that shit out because, you know, I y'all two grown men. I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on personally. And I don't know all the details. And I would, because my nigga would like, smack boy, you post that, your page going to go up. And I said, man, I ain't going to post that, my nigga. Sometimes you don't want to go up off of everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I and I edited it. And that's how, if you look at it like a motherfucker who don't know, they won't see that it's, it's chopped like that. But now that I told you, when you go back and look at it, where he was holding his necklace and had the little Tupac vest on where it was a mid-riff, cat is a crazy nigga. You think they'll, you think they'll ever squash that beef? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a precarious beef because when I hear... It's personal. It's pre precarious and personal. Yeah. I guess for Ali, it's personal. Cat say it's not personal for him because Cat really could give two fucks about it. At least that's how he come across talking about it and speaking about it. Uh, but Ali takes it personal because Ali fit, really feel like he was disrespected. And Ali says what he says and Cat says what he says. I wasn't now. I don't know. Ali said that they been knew each other. Cat tried to make it like seem like that he just met him, you know. But if Ali said that they kicked it beforehand, I don't know why he would say that. But I don't know why Cat would say he don't know him and not. not I don't. It's just some crazy shit, and I don't know the details and intricacies of it. So that's why I, when he done that, I edited the video because I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on, my nigga, and I, you know. For sure. So I ain't gonna get in the middle of that shit. Two grown ass men. Would you would you consider Ali Sadiq just on stand up? Would you consider him a top tier? Man, Ali, Ali is a fucking genius, my nigga. For he sure. a genius, and Ali is one of us, my nigga. He's a street nigga. He's a street comedian. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And so, even though he do, he he perfected. Uh, uh, mainstream comedy, you know, he was on Last Comic Standing on NBC, and he ripped, but he's he's a street. I remember, uh, I had took this bitch to the improv to go see him, and I'm net, but when he's setting up the punchline, and I'm whispering them to her, cause I and I've never seen him before. This is the first I ever seen him live, but he a street nigga. I know what's coming, but I'm still laughing. But I, I'm like, this nigga's a genius yeah. because he hidden all the shit. That niggas, I was like, this nigga, it's authentic, it's real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he really been in them trenches because and before he even say the punchline, I'm whispering him to the hoe and she looking at me like, damn, you brought the bitch at me. You brought another bitch to this show? I was like, no, nah, bitch, it's my first time ever seeing this nigga. Just, he's just a real him. nigga. I just feel him. Yeah, he's a real, the shit he's saying is some real shit. For sure. Yeah. Cat Williams, of course, is a great on stage. Uh, during the beef, especially during the interview with Willie D, it kind of seemed like Cat Williams trying to downplay yeah. Ali's greatness. What? Well, uh, at the same time, he gave him his props because nice. I because we spoke about that on, on, off camera. And cause <laughs> Cat, Cat a monkey nigga, he a funny little dude, and he was like, uh, uh I, he he told he said. I heard his little stories. I was like, damn, you out of line for that, my nigga. You, look, you know, a nigga try to. Try to with, play yeah, shit. when he, you yeah. throw little in that like a motherfucker. Yeah, I heard his little story. <laughs> okay, but just from a fan perspective, uh, on a stand up comedy, how far apart are they levels when it comes to stand up? Do you think Ali is at the same level as Cat? It's just, just, or, raw just, just, just raw skill. Yeah. Fuck yeah. They two different type of comics. But, Absolutely. But uh, like. There's not that much of a margin when it comes to skill. Nah, uh, it just depends on what you like as a com uh, as a fan of comedy. And I'm, I'm a fan of, of highbrow comedy. I'm a fan of, of uh, storytelling. I'm a fan of, of monkey nigga shit. I'm a fan of controversy and uh. Ali is not a controversial con. He's a storyteller, you know what I'm saying, and he's poignant. But and but I'm also a fan of Cat because I like monkey niggas, and Cat yeah. is a monkey nigga. But yeah, he's also controversial, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. And I love 
controversial comedy like a motherfucker that like shit like George Carlin and and and, and Richard Pryor. I Cerebral like that type of shit. Too. Yeah, I like yeah. that shit. I like highbrow shit that make you think. I, that's why I love Dave Chappelle. A lot of motherfuckers was like uh his last special. It was just caught in the mist. Of that Cat Williams shit, but I enjoyed the last special like a motherfucker, you know. But they was like it fell flat. It didn't really fall flat. It just that that, that shit with Cat on Club Shay Shay. He just was a atomic bomb. They just didn't see that shit coming, man. At all. Yeah. I think um I think me personally, I think Ali Sadiq is the greatest Houston comedian of all time. Like just stand up comedy. But yeah, at, at that's this, my person. Yeah, because he yeah. he he got he got the experience and he got. You know, he got the notoriety, but Houston got a lot of great comics in it. They just ain't old school, Thea Vidal type. All yeah. All kind of uh, Arne Billy, SJ. Arne SJ. Yeah, Arne SJ's from Houston. How did I fucking know that? Yeah, Arne SJ's from Houston. Like, uh, and Arne SJ, funny than a motherfucker. Funny. Sydney Castillo from Houston. I don't know him. Juan Villarreal. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of, yeah. Yeah, Billy Sorrell, but Billy all, Sorrell, of, all the lesser known, MC Lotto, Jeff Shelley, Lil Darrell, yeah. Leroy the Third, or uh, Grossman, Blame the Comic. You know, we got we got a a, a nice comedy But I definitely put base. Ali on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, fuck yeah, because what he's what he's doing currently is unprecedented and uh coming out of Houston there's no comic that's that's done what he's he's doing. He funded his own specials and they doing numbers and he just done Good Morning America the other day. Yeah. Congratulations Ali. on that there and shout out to Ali man. Ali Sadiq could come out on stage, introduce himself, sit down and do the whole show in the chair. Yeah. And that and you know that was people rolling. And you know that was considered disrespectful mm -hmm. like back in the day. Or uh, Bill Cosby was, you know, okay. The comedian sat down, but it's called stand up comedy for. Uh, uh, I heard mm. a comedian say it's called stand up for a reason. Okay, okay. And like you got, they say you had to be a different type of comic to be able to sit down and do comedy and be respected in stand up comedy. You know, for sure. What do you think about Country Wayne versus Godfrey? I think it's really uh. I think Country Wayne wanted to manufacture some beef because he saw like the trend of it. Cause Godfrey really didn't disrespect him. I, At all. I, I watched like uh, over half of that because I'm a Godfrey fan, and I'm not just saying it because I'm a Godfrey fan. But Godfrey didn't didn't really don't that wasn't disrespectful. I just just think it's some shit that Country Wayne trying to manufacture some beef because he's seen how well it done for Cunt uh for Cat Williams. And Monique and all this here shit here, and, and right now controversy equals content and equals more sales and and more demand. And you know, cause in my eyesight, Godfrey didn't really say anything disrespectful about him, you know, at all. I don't, I didn't see it as disrespect. I can't say how a man for how a man should feel or how he should take it. But from the outside, if Godfrey would have said what he what he said and it was about me, I wouldn't have took it as disrespect, but you know, who knows how another man feels about whatever the fuck. But yeah, I didn't feel like, it, I just feel like it's, if Country Wayne ain't man, you're trying to manufacture something, it, it's a misunderstanding or some miscommunication, but he was just like, keep my name out your mouth. And I, I really think like, that, Almost like he was trying to be for real. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, he like he wanted to revert back to, cause he spoke like, I ain't always been Country Wayne. I was, or uh, whatever his real name was, or uh, I guess when he was affiliated with the streets, or whatever. But uh, yeah. But I, and, and they, I understand niggas try to beat on their chest like King Kong and nigga I do, but niggas just be woofing. Niggas ain't gonna do nothing. Niggas got too much to lose. Uh he employ a lot of people. He got a lot of goddamn kids and baby mamas. And they <laughs> getting used to that luxury lifestyle. Ain't no crashing out for that boy. Yeah, yeah, and that ain't that ain't worth it. That's like not our shit. <laughs> yeah, cause you know what when motherfuckers go to live in a certain type of way that niggas ain't trying to get that shit up. That's why niggas are, are never uh We'll never overcome because the niggas we need to rely on for resources and for our backing, them niggas is living luxurious. Them niggas not finna risk losing everything they got 
for you poor broke dumbass niggas in the ghetto, nigga. I ain't finna be a revolutionary nigga when I'm fucking bitches and flying all over the world. Hey. Yeah, but I, I don't really think it's as serious. I you see it it died out just as fast as Country Wayne spoke on it. You know what I'm saying? Cause niggas really didn't view it as as a real like beef type situation. At least I didn't. It's like a lot of comedy beef going on. Right? A bunch of it, my nigga. That's it's great. all over the place. And, but uh, I've always known that anything that's involving niggas is competitive. Mm. <laughs> Especially, you. you know, because if you just look at the nature of the game, uh, for us, we never controlled anything. Somebody has always controlled our access to whatever it may be. May it be comedy, may it be movies, may it be sports. Somebody controls how much we can get, how uh, how far we can go, what, what uh, way we could travel to get there. Somebody controls all that. And for the longest, we've been told that no matter what arena it is, it can only be one. If it's architecture, we can only have one black architecture. If it's or uh, basketball. It's a bunch of niggas out there, but it can only be one that ascends that, you know, we one celebrate. Star. Yeah. Or uh, comedy. It can only be one. You know what I'm saying? And niggas have, have broke these doors down, but it's still a, 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 a hierarchy. You know what I'm saying? It's this nigga, this nigga, this nigga. At the, it's only one. It's only going to be one that, that can be set. And it's it, number one. It's one thing I got up, man. Only one person can be number one. It's just more detrimental with niggas because somebody controls us. Like we white folks really don't give a fuck about number one because they control the shit. You know what I'm saying? And niggas, we don't have any control. Somebody tells us who our number one is. Rarely, what is the last black leader that niggas have picked on their own? Every nigga that niggas go behind has been given to us have been told this is y'all leader yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. we didn't even we didn't even really choose Farrakhan Farrakhan came into that's ascension a that's a fact he came into ascension in the nation and he was talking his shit and they started putting him on all these talk shows and niggas was like Oh, that's who we following. They, but they the white on, man gave him the platform. They put him on the Candace Owen promo run. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I feel what you're saying. Yeah. I feel what you're saying. You know, and they, Donahue and all these different, and he was talking some good shit, but it was still uh, white folk. But he was doing grassroots shit and bringing niggas in, but it was once he started doing white folks uh, platforms that niggas on a on a national level, really start paying them attention. So they, in a sense, that's still a form of choosing our leader for us, who you put in front of us and who you want us to focus on and who you want us to follow. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said earlier in the inter interview, motherfuckers can look at me as a divisive uh, entity because white folks, they need motherfuckers like me and motherfuckers like Farrakhan. They need that. They Because white folks need to know what niggas to look out for. You know what I'm saying? So we give them this nigga to focus on and all them niggas that go over there, we know what them niggas' mind state is. For sure. Yeah, they, 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 you know, and then you got the niggas who go against Farrakhan. So as long as they can keep niggas on all, and all these different sex and all these different aisles and going at each other, shit, we'll never get shit right, my nigga, because we don't agree on, we all want want the end goal, but we disagree on how we get that. Do we walk? Do we run? Do we crawl? Do we fly? You know what I'm saying? I, I fucks with uh, a lot of the shit that Farrakhan speaks. Oh, fuck yeah. But I do agree with you, and I feel what you're saying about how he came to Ascension. Yeah. And it's a good point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's but just it's always, it's always going to be contention. Yeah, but it it's, it's just being honest. It's no disrespect to Farrakhan because I, I agree with shit. 99.9% .9 of the shit that Farrakhan say, aside from the religious aspect, I ain't no religious nigga at all. They fuck religion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Well, speaking on that, I definitely wanted to ask you this question. It was on my list to ask you. Did you see uh, Vladimir Putin expose all oh, of these? The black, the black <laughs> Jesus shit. Yeah, supposedly it's some archives that have been stowed away. Yeah, that people been pillaging and 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 stealing uh, artifacts and shit. But I don't believe G. I, fuck Jesus, nigga. I don't believe in that whole ass shit, nigga. They, <laughs> they use that shit to keep you dumbass niggas oppressed, my nigga. You niggas steady waiting for this sky daddy and all that whole ass shit. Fuck that shit, nigga. Jesus, what they, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Nigga, all, every story in the Bible is an allegory that came from Cush and Kemet and all that shit is on the walls of the pyramids. These are stories that came from niggas using the names Horus, Isis, Osiris, Amun-Ra, Otep. All these motherfuckers here, they just took the stories, gave them some white folks' names, and regurgitated the shit and fed it back to you niggas. And, but if a nigga tell you the same story but use the, the Holy Trinity is Isis, Osiris, and Horus. But if a nigga tell you that, uh, nigga, that's witchcraft. That's voodoo. Nigga, it's the same goddamn thing as motherfucking uh, Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. Oh, All man. that shit there, my nigga. Get the fuck out of here, you dumbass niggas. For sure. Um, with the um, with the Putin Putin shit, any chance you think that this could just be a tactic by Putin to distract from some other shit coming out uh, of the, the Black Jesus? Saying he basically said that oh, we have artifacts in Russia that have been stored in archives in Russia that conceal the true identity of Jesus yeah, as a the, black man. The Vatican, the Pope, you know, when the Pope go kiss niggas' feet and all that shit there, they got the black Madonna and, and all that shit there, you know, all that, man, they, they but do, are. But do because do, especially what's going on right now with Ukraine. And Russia also just banned LG. They all consider yeah. LGBT to be a terrorist or terrorist, <laughs> terrorist extremist. You niggas is some motherfucking booty terrorist, cake. <laughs> Crazy man. You niggas terrorizing niggas rectums, cake. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised some of you cake ass nigga got C4 in the booty cake. <laughs> Crazy shit. <laughs> you can't, yeah, man. Uh, motherfuckers always got a motive and an agenda yeah. with shit that they do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Rarely do you see, especially a motherfucker in politics, it's always a motive and an agenda. America sits up. That's why a problem with niggas. We always, we steady looking 400 years back talking about what happened 400 years ago and we want reparations and white folks is looking 100 and 200 years ahead. They like, y'all still on that shit? Yeah, they preparing for 100 and 200. White folks is sitting up conjuring shit. They got all these different plans and strategies ready for however this shit go, they got a motherfucking strategy for it, my nigga. They got some plan. Okay, well, we know if niggas do this, we'll do this. If they do that, we'll do that. You know what I'm saying? But niggas is steady. They know as long as we keep these niggas asking for some shit that we know we ain't going to give them, and we keep these niggas fighting amongst e each other. We could do these niggas however the fuck we want to do these niggas. Every now and then, these niggas get a little disgruntled. Get one of these bitch ass niggas who we gave all this money and clout to, who these niggas pull a dick and praise, march them out there, tell them, nigga, we ain't kneeling no more. Nigga, that shit is old, that shit passe. And you know. They'll follow soon. Yeah, they niggas break shut this the fuck dude. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah. Man, um, how about this? Um, have you seen Donald Trump? Of course, we've seen that he's sold in shoes. <laughs> but have you seen Donald know. Trump hey, is selling yeah. Bibles now? Trump mm -hmm. Bibles, which come sixty to fifty nine ninety nine, which come also with a revised copy of the U.S. Constitution, and it's called it's a Trump Bible, but it's called like when the, you say a revised copy of the Constitution, what does me, that let, entail? Let me let me see here. Let me matter of fact, let me look. It how up. do you revise a, a document that's supposed to be concrete? Let me look Even it up. though I understand, cause they the uh they uh they alter the laws. They keep the law so broad to where if they need to go back in and and tweak it for their benefit, they can. So, so Trump is selling the God bless the USA Bible, the sixty dollar fifty nine ninety nine 
The Trump and Lee Greenwood are selling these Bibles. Trump is now in business of selling Bibles, according to this announcement. Uh, nigga, Trump are crazy, nigga. In partnership with country music singer Lee Greenwood, best known for his song God Bless the USA, they paired for the $59.99 collaboration. And it says that, uh, <laughs> it says, all, <laughs> um, it, it says a bunch of shit. It was something else. Let me see. Where is that? Man, that nigga Trump crazy, my nigga. <laughs> that nigga that. <laughs> Trump, Trump is selling Bible. <laughs> yeah, that nigga that. That nigga, that, that nigga Trump. <laughs> but he figured out he could sell. God bless the USA, man. He figured, figured out he could sell these dumb ass motherfuckers anything. He sell them a dream, nigga. He get up there, he... Get up there and sell motherfuckers a dream. Trump is the consummate con man. He's the he's a real New Yorker. That nigga yeah. that nigga been picked everybody pocket. Like if if your mind if your brain is in your pocket and you fuck with Trump, he picked your pocket, my nigga. That's what that nigga Trump is a con man. And I you don't I don't hate to hate the hustler of the game, man. If you fall for that dumb bullshit. You know, my Trump think Trump love America. Or Trump love you, so man, Trump don't give a fuck about nobody but Trump, my nigga. Nah, man, for real, man. A he, real city slicker like a mother. Yeah, and if he and if you fall for that dumb shit, man, I, motherfuckers in America just stupid, man. You vote motherfuckers in to control your life and to make your life a living hell, nigga. Everybody that you vote for, no thing. And America got the perfect system because the Democrat, when shit don't get done, the Democrat, Democrats blame the Republicans and the Republicans blame the Democrats. It's just a cycle of mixing niggas up. Yeah. They just in a blender. Mixing, yeah, mixing you up. That's why I, I, and I love, don't get me wrong, I don't want motherfuckers from D.C. to think that I don't like D.C. because the people in D.C. are some real people and nice. some enjoyable people and some and some some lovely people. But I can't go back to D.C. unless I'm paid to do that. And then I don't want to be in D.C. that long because when I seen that homeless motherfucking camp right in front of the motherfucking uh Congress. Crazy. crazy. Right across the street, my nigga, y'all got a whole homeless camp. You telling me the motherfuckers that people vote for to fix this shit passes by this shit every day. Every and you don't to work. you don't see the need. You don't feel nothing in your heart when you go into that motherfucking Congress like, man, we need to fix this. This is a problem. What the fuck are you in there for, my nigga? And but my partner told me some real shit because I'm a carpenter by trade and we got a saying in carpentry that nigga we gonna work ourselves out of work. And every year they give a budget for homelessness, but as we can see the shit, the problem look like it's getting worse and worse. But if they fix homelessness, then they ain't got no job. Hmm. It's crazy. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a sick cycle though. You know the game, man. Yeah. That's the game. Fuck yeah. That's the problem. Not too many motherfuckers know the game. Motherfuckers be thinking they know. There's so many dumb mother. The uh, best and worst thing about social media is it gave everybody a voice, my nigga. That's the best thing about it, and that's the worst thing about it. It showed you how many dumb motherfuckers is in this world, <laughs> and it showed you how many dumb motherfuckers is in this world. For real. I put it on Front Street. Yeah. Yeah, I, f I feel that though. Um, I'm at the end of the road. You know, so there's a lot of shit we could talk about. But before we go, I want to ask you this, and I'm gonna show you a picture for this one. Before we go, man, shout out to Eight Keys, my nigga Wonka. Show me, show me your shit though. Yeah, we always like to promote that shit. Yeah, Black on, man, he, he dope. He up there on Flatbush in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn, man. Yeah, yeah, Wonka. Or uh, his uh his clothing line is Eight Keys. Uh, he used to be at uh, his his show, shop now, District Eight, but he up there on flat. This a whole suit, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he fresh. Yeah. yeah, whole whole motherfucking unit, like a motherfucker, nah, man. Sure. That nigga Wonka, real nigga, man. Up out of that Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to the whole NYC. And I pre he brought me like like uh two units and a hoodie, like a motherfucker. But yeah, nah, for sure. Yeah, sure. Nah, and and if you're a black designer, man, send me your shit, man. I don't. I don't fuck with all that Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Fuck them niggas, man. And fuck all you niggas who be promoting them shit, but you niggas don't never put on no black nigga shit. Y'all niggas go spin all, blow all these white folk. Like, uh, 
I'll be rocking rock deep shoes. Shout out to Rocky. My uh, signature shoes supposed to be coming out. And niggas, uh, niggas be, oh, what kind of whole ass shoes is them? Nigga, if I would have tagged Balenciaga, you bitch at all oh, them Jumped hoes on. fresh. Yeah. yeah they, let, they letting other people dictate our culture. Yeah, my nigga. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Blog, you giving all them whole ass niggas. Them whole ass, that shit be uglier than a motherfucker. Nigga, these are $1,000. So fucking what? If they put a $400 price tag on Wranglers, you bitch ass niggas a bomb and say they the shit. Nigga, fuck you. Now, I hate you whole ass niggas. <laughs> Man, with that being said, this is the perfect. This is the last question. All right. Is this, is he fresh or not? I don't see nothing wrong with that nigga, my nigga. I, uh, I, I, I finally seen a video. I seen somebody uh, put it up, but it's a classic clean look. I, ain't, I, don't, I don't get it. You youngsters, I, like I said, a nigga got to come out dressed like Rainbow Bright or some motherfucker. Strawberry shortcake for you niggas <laughs> to feel like, oh, that nigga, that, ooh, nigga, I need a purse like that. <laughs> I mean, it's cause he got a polo on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess polo is out of style now, I guess. Man, for who? Man, I don't know. He got man. the, he got the, je the he, jeans kind of baggy, though. Of course. But they starched up. And he, uh, he a whole grown nigga, my nigga. Yeah. You know what you expect from you? Now, if he out there trying to look young motherfucker, old nigga trying to look like a young nigga, you look like a fool. Uh, that's why I say nigga ain't got no win with niggas. Nigga ain't got no win with niggas. Nigga, he, he look cool to me, my nigga. It's something that I, I, I ain't never been no New Balance nigga. Not to say that New, uh, I just ain't never fuck with New Balance, but the New Balance... He, 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 you know, he look good, my nigga. He can go somewhere, and I wouldn't be like, I, I look like that when I see you clown ass niggas. You niggas be out here sideways, nigga. I don't even. <laughs> some of you niggas be. I think you niggas is colorblind sometimes, my what, nigga. Okay, what is the worst fashion trend that you hate in 2024? Tell me that. It ain't really shit. Really, all these. Probably them ugly ass shoes that these niggas be With wearing. With the thick soles. Yeah, this nigga be wearing some uh, arthritic, uh, <laughs> posturepedic, therapeutic ass shoes. Man, nigga, your whole ass feet look like a bumper car, cake ass nigga. You, get, you got a grill of a Chevy on your foot, cake ass nigga. Man, these uh -huh. niggas here, man, them shoes be ugly in them. And just because they Balenciagas and, man, you seen them other Balenciagas that look like uh steel boots and shit. Yeah, that shit look crazy. like a, a motherfucking transformer foot, like a motherfucker, man. Crazy. You niggas is crazy, man. I would they know what, but that goes along with the mentality that shows you what these people think of you, my nigga. That show them people think that you so fucking dumb and so fucking ignorant that they could sell you. Anything, Anything, nigga, and just put a high ass price tag on it, and you niggas gonna go for it and rock that shit, nigga. Sell this nigga a trash bag. Man, these people think you are a fucking idiot, my nigga. That's their way of calling you a nigga without having to call you a nigga. Mm. Cause when you go buy that shit, they be like, look at this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so check this though. We, you grew up back in the day when we we people we our culture we was wearing baggy clothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you see the baggy coming back. How do is you feel? It? You don't see the baggy clothes come back? Uh-uh. I, I don't be paying attention. The baggy man. shit is back in style. Oh, okay. Niggas is wearing the baggy shit now. Yeah. I was going to ask you how you feel, but you ain't been paying attention. Nah, I don't, I don't really but pay attention. But the baggy attention. shit is back. Oh, uh, that's cool. I, you know, everything just goes in a circle. Remember yes. when bell bottoms came back? You know, in about 10, 15, 20 years, they'll be back in style. Everything, ain't nothing new under the sun. Everything just just goes in a cycle, my nigga. You know, I totally uh, agree. it's a, only a limited amount of ideas. How much shit can you do? Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. At, at the end of the day, I, that's what I kind of feel when they putting out goddamn steel toe metal block shoes. They like, or these big red boots. They like, all right, fuck it. Ain't no styles left. Let's just make some bullshit. Yeah, and niggas want to yeah. call it fat. Oh, nigga, this fashion forward. Nah. Nigga, look like your foot stuck in concrete, hoe ass nigga. You, you niggas is dumb, my nigga. Thanks. Man, um. Walk down the stairs and fall the fuck down. Like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do gotta, I, I gotta say this though, man. We came to the end, and I wanna say it's an honor and a privilege. We not finished, cause I got a little battery juice left. So I'm going to ask whatever until this shit run out. But we at the end. But yeah. I'm finna just run some yeah, shit. Yeah, rapid but, fire type shit. Yeah, but I want to say thank you, man. I appreciate you always fucking with me, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. 
one of my favorite, I want to say maybe my favorite green room guest. You know what I'm saying? You, you've you been rocking with me since I started this shit. Yeah. And I fucks with you no ditty, man. <laughs> no ditty, dog. Hey, that show no ditty, nigga. I hit you in your suck muscles, nigga. <laughs> All right, so look, this 20 versus 1. You had this thing where you told the girl she could be on this and that. Yeah, look like a super gremlin. <laughs> you went, like, I never seen nobody go off like that in the 20 versus 1. I went off? You went off. But you, you, it's like you don't have no, you, you, you like don't mind. It's like you don't care about going there with females. I don't feel, give a fuck about going out with nobody, my nigga. Yeah. Well, if it's real, it's real. You know, and you know, I know these bitches got all that shit on and bitch be feeling they self, but bitch take that shit off. Let's have a natural challenge, funky bitch. All you funky bitches tomorrow, get online and put up post a natural pitch. I bet you you won't do it, funky bitch. With no makeup, no hair, none of that extra shit. I bet you won't do it. And ain't none, none of you cake ass niggas man enough to call these hoes out on it and all that, that shit. Because yeah, the hoe feel like just because she got a fat ass nigga, that's enough so that's why these hoes going out getting me